Hey, this is Michael with X-Force PC. I was talking to Austin the other day. He's the creator of X-Plane, and I was telling him about the Real Sim Gear G1000 suite. And I told him, you know, I couldn't really do an effective demo because I don't know how to use one. And I know he has something very similar to this in his plane. So what I asked him to do is come in and do a, a cold demo of the product. And what I mean by cold demo is he just sat down for the first time ever using this product and just used it. And the results were actually pretty good. Um, well, you'll see. We did a, a little short flight. It's, the the video is done in the style of a live stream. It wasn't a live stream, but it's very kind of off the cuff. You know, I'm moving the camera around a lot and so forth so you can see what's going on. So with, uh, without further ado, here we go. All right, so we're here taking a look at the Real Sim Gear G1000 setup, and I've got Austin Meyer here. He's going to put it through its paces because this is what you have in your plane, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, well, I have a G900 in my application. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to take the microphone and go put it on Austin now. Okay. So you're probably not going to be able to hear me very well. It's fine. Now, um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Get this aimed up. Tell me one thing real quick. Um, some people have pointed out that the X-Plane G1000 does not have a little functionality of a real, per se, G1000. W what does it lack? Well, the G900X in my airplane, which is basically a G1000 for experimental, has synthetic vision, and there's more like little uh, menus and stuff. You can go here to check on how many satellites you're getting in the GPS constellation or what your nearest frequencies are and stuff like that. But you, like, never use that in the real plane. Um, the real airplane does have some pretty nice weather overlays, though, and it looks like we don't have that here. So I'm thinking that uh, Philip... It looks like he's added next rad, and that's it. But um, the real airplane, I mean, it's got winds aloft, freezing level, fronts, all this cool stuff. So it looks like we lack synthetic vision and a full set of uh, weather. We just have the base weather. Those are the only things that matter. Anything other than that is stuff that just doesn't really matter, that we, you, know, you never really use to complete a flight. Now keep in mind, when I ask this question, they may not be able to hear me very well. Okay. Um, are those things that could be added down the road or planned for later, or do you know? Right, so the question is, will we add them? And I think, I think the answer is inevitably yes. It's inevitable that we're going to add them. But uh, so Philip Munzell is our avionics coder these days and he uh, has got stuff lined up to do everything from citations to you know all sorts of jets and props and he's got a list a mile long of avionics he's got a code and he decides basically in my research everybody decides what he wants to do on his own and he decides when he wants to put down say oh I don't know the avionics for assess the citation and get onto the synthetic vision for a Garmin or something like that so um, he's always cranking away he prioritizes and it's just a matter of when it shows up on the list so you're on your you're at your airport right now, which is CUB. K C U B. C U B where I'm based um, in reality. Mm -hmm. Would it be realistic for me to ask you to go through the procedure like you were in your plane and like you were flying sure. in New York? Uh, why don't we just go to Camden? Okay. Ten minutes away. Sounds we'll save about two hours. Well, I'm not or an hour and a half. To fly there, but just uh -huh. go through the procedures. But we sure. can fly there too. No, we'll just go to Camden. Okay, so I'll go direct uh, let's say K. And by the way, I've never actually used this before this moment, other than I just looked at it briefly. So I'm, I'm operating this the way I operate my real airplane. And if it all works, then that means it must work exactly like the real airplane. Otherwise, I'd be sitting here uttering profanities. That's how it doesn't work right. Okay. So if I can do it, it's right. So all right, so let's go uh, brakes off. Uh, we're in a Cirrus jet here, which is uh, exactly the same speed as my Evolution, by the way. But has a lot less I climb. I can handle this, but I'm gonna um, give them a little uh, okay. flyby. Sure, why not? This is what we're in. A little Cirrus jet. Yeah, this thing doesn't accelerate like my plane. Okay, um, then we go gear up. Okay, so here we are uh, in our Cirrus jet. And now tell me this: Can you see the the map here, or do can I move to the oh, side I'm a little gonna, bit, maybe? I'm 
move the camera just a little bit. Let's see. We're almost doing this like a live stream, except it's not a live stream. Uh, can you get it some yeah, camera? Like, there we go. Sure. Okay, there we go. So we're not. This isn't a live stream, but it's it's coming off like a live stream. But That's yeah, fine. Okay, I can see the. That's fine. Now. Yeah, you can edit it or upload it unedited. It makes a difference. Okay, so um, as you can see, so I just dialed in a KCUB here with a direct, and that gives me a path going to uh, to Camden. And so I'm just going to kind of aim at it. And let's see, in the real airplane, I can say direct, enter, enter. There we go. Uh, I think in the real airplane, I hit enter twice. And here I only had to enter once. So there may be a teeny, tiny little thing Philip wants to address there. Um, right. This thing basically is as good. I mean, it depends on X plane. Right. Correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what we're looking here is the real sim gear. Uh, hardware, which is frankly excellent. It's great. It doesn't feel exactly like the real G1000 and the buttons don't have quite the same resistance and the same. It's incredible how sensitive you can get to a button that has more or less resistance or a deeper or shallower like click through pressure or uh, more or less damping or a slightly different material. I mean, all of these things are a little bit different than the G1000. And so I can instantly tell, like I instantly can tell that the range knob is a slightly different size and has slightly less resistance. I mean, I've got about 500 hours in my evolution. And so anytime I touch here, if it's like 10% different than the real one, I'll instantly notice it. But the layout is exactly the same. It looks exactly the same. If you can use one, you can use the other. And the uh, haptics of it are they're not terrible. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, push the pedal to the metal. All right, so, any, so now I've just said direct to Camden or following the route. This is pretty basic stuff. Let's, let's so what get, are you looking at to follow the route? Are you just just a little, the follow map? the yellow brick road, little, the little pink line. If we had synthetic vision, there would be hoops here. But for here, I'm going to go with the line. All right, now let's get a little more advanced. Okay, so that's direct two. Now I'm going to go autopilot on. When I turn the autopilot, we go to roll and pitch. Now, let's go, for example, uh, let's pre-select an altitude of, let's say, oh, I don't know, uh, 6,000. All right, so uh, altitude, and let's go to a, uh, a vertical speed hold, and uh, let's go to a vertical speed hold of 2,000 feet per minute. So we're at a 2,000 foot per minute vertical speed hold up to an altitude pre-selection of 6,000 feet. And so now let's try uh, synchronizing our heading bug. That works good. And let's go to heading. Boom. And now let's try, say, a left turn. So basically, we're heading 0, 03030 uh, 0, 0, while climbing at 2,000 feet per minute, uh, looking for a 6,000 foot altitude capture. And so this is just this is how you use the GFC 700 autopilot, which is a wonderful autopilot. God, it's a nice autopilot. I don't have that autopilot on my airplane, unfortunately. So I'm remembering how to use the autopilot from uh, back when I used to fly a Columbia 400, which did have the GFC 700 in it. Um, okay, so we're motored on a long, and now let's go direct enter. There we go. And now let's go for, let's see what happens if I hit nav. Ah, there we go. And so now that I hit nav, instead of heading, the thing is going to fly the airplane uh, onto the hoops. You see? So we got our direct navigation. We got our autopilot. We've shown heading hold, nav hold, vertical speed hold. And we've acquired 6,000 feet. There's an altitude hold. And uh, let's now dial in uh, 7,000 feet. And let's see, do a flight level change. A flight level change is going to hold an airspeed instead of a vertical speed. And uh, we'll flight level change it at, say, uh, 200 knots. Now, hear the distinct noise there when you hit that. Does the yeah. real one do that? that kind of I don't know, because the, so, the sound of a button trying to compete with an 850 horsepower PT6, trust me, it ain't going to register. Oh, and you're wearing noise canceling headsets. True. This is like saying, do you hear the button on the radio on your Harley when you're driving it down the highway? I mean, this is like, it is not a thing. But um, so here we go. So there was a flight level change. So we just held an airspeed. So I've demonstrated a heading, uh, a roll mode, which is what it was when it turned on, and a GPS steering mode where it followed the hoops. I've demonstrated an altitude hold, a vertical speed hold, and a flight level change, which is an airspeed hold to climb or descend. So um, pretty nice, nice autopilot functionality. It perfectly matches the GFC 700, which uh, a lot of people have with their uh, Garmin 1000s or G900Xs. Um, and, what's, the, uh, what's the red button, the shiny red button? Uh, this, let's see if it works. Oh, yay, it does. This goes to a backup primary display here. So in other words, if this blanks out in flight, you just hit this and you can continue flight over here. And then the, over the, here. the screen goes to a little patch in the corner. Yeah, you have a little map here so you can still yeah. see what's going on. And uh, you have it here. 
You see, uh, so uh, you, yeah, you got it there. Okay, so now we've now now we've down autopilot and route navigation, and of course all the displays look like this in the real airplane. Obviously, the same oil pressure and temperature and EGT and N1 and all that. Now let's get a little more advanced. Let's do a procedure. Let's select approach, instrument approach. Let's take the uh, R nav to runway two four. Let's grab it from fix catchy. Let's uh, activate it. Boom. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to fly an instrument approach. Uh, and I'm going to turn off the autopilot. I'd rather just hand fly it. Uh, we'll turn off the light director. Now, what you may, for example, let's see if I can. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, the steering is way too sensitive. The real one doesn't move that quick. But um, with the real one, when you scroll around, it goes D, 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 D. But Philip has it going boop, boop, boop. So that's a little something for Philip to work on, okay. just the scrolling speed. But at any rate, so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to fly this instrument approach into Camden. Now I just happen to know the altitudes off the top of my head, but what you would really be doing is you would have a copy of ForeFlight or Xavion, which is what I use instead of ForeFlight, that has all your charts and plates on it when you fly, so you can descend to the right altitudes. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do in the real airplane. Certainly in the real airplane, I would have that approach played out. Um, I'm just skipping it here because I didn't happen to bring a copy of ForeFlight or Xavion with me. Out in case that goes wrong? No, there's no altitudes listed here. This is something Garmin doesn't do. I think it's a little bit of a failure uh, on Garmin's part, but they did not show the altitudes here. So you have to have synthetic vision to see the hoops, to even guess your approximate altitudes. But even that's an approximation because it's hard to tell exactly how high you are you know, or down you are in the hoop, right? So I think Garmin dropped the ball a little bit by not showing uh, altitudes here. But Xavion, which is the app I wrote uh, to compete with ForeFlight, does show the altitudes on the fixes. And it shows the whole plates, the altitude, and then Garmin, uh, Xavion itself, shows the altitudes uh, as well. So uh, it's a lot better for that uh, third uh, dimension. Okay. All right, can you go to the keyboard and just hit, uh, just, just uh, 16 X me over the ground for about, oh, I don't know, five seconds or so. What is it, like Command T? I only know it on Macintosh. No oh, you don't know ground acceleration? Hit Control T. Control T. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right, I hit it about three more times to scroll through, that's it. Okay, there we go. And then one more. Okay, so we're, okay, again. There, you see, that was one, two, four, and eight X time speed, you see? But your computer's not fast enough for these rendering settings to go to 16 X. It only went up to about 1.5. Now try hitting another thing. Try hit Alt T. Let's see about that. Alt T? Yeah. There, two X ground speed. Now we're covering ground at two oh, X the rate. So you, you're, you're fast forwarding yeah. the flight. Yeah, by, with ground speed though. All right, hit it, take it up to 16 X. Okay, hit it again, four, eight, 16, okay, now hold. You see, look, I'm doing 16x ground speed. Oh, yeah. And now, boom, hit it again, take me out of hyperspace. There we go, and now we're back to regular speed. So it's hyperspace. Yep, there we go. So everybody should know that if they want to save time. All right. Yeah, so if you want to practice taking off and landing uh, Columbia to Camden, you can yeah. save 10 minutes in the middle. Yeah, with that command T. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh oh, Philip's course, he just kind of like ate up some of the hoops a little too soon. I should have gone to catch and made a turn. He deleted some of the hoops coming up to iBay a little soon. So he. So uh, clear, that's an X plane. Yeah, that's issue. a little a little X plane bug, a little mini mini X plane bug. I can still fly the approach, but it'd be nice if the hoops went all the way up to the nose of the airplane, uh, not got eaten all the way up to here. You're having to sort of insert the hoops with your mind. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um which is uh, not exactly ideal. So at any rate, there's a little bug for Philip. All right, but other than that, it's just like doing it in the real airplane. I mean, this is just like the real plane. I'm gonna give it a little more juice here. Do you have this hooked up to trim? I think you don't. No, that's gonna look around inside the cockpit. Okay, let me just trim her up a little bit. All right, there we go. And so- Probably um, something on that stick is, I just don't know yeah. what it is. All right, that's fine. All right, so now we're coming in from Catchy, the initial approach fix, and we're gonna, yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this because this tells me what to tell Philip to improve. The hoops got eaten too soon and the map scrolls too fast. Let's go full speed here. And Philip is? Philip Ringler, one of our subcontractors. He's uh, in Germany. He does an incredibly good job, but I don't think uh, he flies an airplane with the G1000 very often. So he doesn't really know these things until uh, until I try them. It's like what he learns, he learns from the book. He flies tons, but I don't think he flies G1000 airplanes. Gotcha. Okay. All right, now we're eating the next fix. Now we're gonna come around and grab Pugsy. 
Yeah, when I first got my instrument rating, I thought flying an instrument approach was hard. But once you've done it, a few, granted, a few, quite a few hundred times, it starts to get pretty straightforward. It's just going from one fix to the other is all it's doing, and just having a certain altitude per fix. Well, when it's you not first that hard. did it too, you're doing it on steam gauges. As well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. This makes it about a million times easier. Oh, cool. So we got some other traffic there, 6,800 feet above me. And now we're just turning on the final approach course. Oh, cool. And we got our GPS drive glide path. That's this little dot here. And so when that dot comes, it's just like the glide slope on an ILS. We'll follow it down, but on um, it's GPS derived. There's not actually a transmitter. And so now I'm right on the approach. So see, I'm, I'm running right down the little course to Camden. And I got my little GPS derived glide path. And I'm coming at 320 knots, which is a little quicker than most people would, but it's fine. All right. We're just in the sim. In my evolution, I practice approaches, I just leave the gear up, and it's very common for me to keep 200 knots at this point in the flight. <laughs> well, there's no way I could even think about lowering the gear flaps at that speed, so I have to go to a missed approach. There's no possible way I could land. And so as you can see, we're just coming down the course here, we're coming down our GPS drive glide path, and it should be a very little surprise that the runway's in front of us. And I'll go ahead and get the power to idle. Now in the real airplane, if I had this kind of speed, well, first of all, I wouldn't because we're over red line. Uh, but I would uh, certainly miss the approach carrying this kind of speed. But we're just in the sim, so who cares? You're down. It's a notch of flaps, so wouldn't kill anybody. Yeah, we're hauling ass here. 100, 170 knots over short final. So I might not. I might just have to miss. We'll see. See, the Cirrus only slows down so fast because it doesn't have a propeller to slow it down. You see, my my evolution actually slows down a lot quicker than this because that prop soaks up the energy. All right, we're at 120 knots with a tiny bit of runway left. So I'm going to call that the miss. I'm going to raise the nose. Full power gear up. Flaps up. Oh, let's see if we can miss the approach. Uh, procedure. Uh, activate missed approach. Yay, look at that. Voot. And then it, uh, so I said activate missed approach. Now it's drawing the little hoops to do the oh, miss yeah. and go back to the holding pattern. Hey, I'm glad, I'm glad I uh, came in too fast because that gave us practice of the missed approach. And then we're just going to kind of turn around here and go to the, go out to the holding pattern. I program that stick with flaps and oh, it doesn't uh, matter. all that ahead of time. We'll make the keyboard a little more convenient. It's fine, doesn't matter. All right, so now we're going to run in the outbound. Now, the real Garmin will even help you with the entry. Let's see if this thing does. All right, hyperspace, boom, 16x ground speed. Yeehaw. Nope. All right, there's another tiny little detail for Philip. The real Garmin will draw the entry into the holding pattern, the right way to enter the holding pattern, but Philip didn't do that. So whenever we do this in x you have to figure out the holding pattern entry yourself, which, by the way, you're supposed to be able to do anyway on your own. But, uh, yeah, that's another little detail for Philip. All right, so, Philip, if you see this, we need slower map panning on holding pattern entries and don't eat the hoops too quick. Those are the things that like kind of sort of need to be done. And then the optional nice to have later would be more weather and synthetic vision, but that's much lower priority because you don't really need to have that. You know, those are just optional add-ons. But stuff like holding pattern entry, scroll speed and hoop eating, that's like how the system works. That pretty much has to be right. So anyway, right, those are some little things uh, I'll ask Philip to do. And this is uh, a little teardrop over there. What is that? Oh, it told us a teardrop entry. We're supposed to come in like this and then bring around like that. And it looks like a big teardrop to oh, enter the pattern. Yeah, that's how far we can go with the uh, with an hour of fuel reserve. Oh, so okay. at the rate we're going through fuel right now, um, that's how far we can go uh, and still have an hour of fuel. So, uh, yeah. What's that yellow in the upper left corner? Terrain. Oh, okay. Terrain. Philip did a great job of that. Wow. So that's the mountain. Actually, yeah. Right? Actually, that works better than mine. I don't think, actually, you know, I haven't actually turned on my terrain and zoomed out that much, I don't think. So I don't know if my, my Garmin does that or not. Um, because I'm not literally zoomed out that far with the topo terrain on. I fly with topo, I think I fly with uh topo, but not terrain. There we go, that's how I fly. 
Eh, he's still drawing it. All right, I'm not sure if he should or not. It'll be a little something to look at. So at any rate, that's looking at the G1000. Um, it's absolutely great for training, but there's a few more details that uh, I want to get us dialed in, which we will. That's all I got.